All right, ladies and gentlemen, we recently discussed on combinations using astrology for narcissism in a horoscope. But then there were so many comments in that video and so many messages I got to make a video to illustrate how do I know if I am actually dealing with a narcissist. So, as I said in that video, that there are so many symptoms of being a narcissist and every human being in this world has narcissistic tendencies to some extent. 1%, 2%, 10%, somebody 100 or somebody 101%. But narcissism comes when these traits and behaviors start hindering daily interactions or intimate relationships, close relationships. So which means they are disturbing, they are inhibiting the person from having a normal conversation sometimes. So there are many symptoms, of course, uh, but here I have listed down 10 and there are many videos you will find on YouTube, but these are especially uh, the ones which I have experienced in my personal life dealing with so many people. And uh, as usual, if you are new to the channel and I see you have not subscribed, then I'm going to find you through your email and I'm going to finish you. So now we go and subscribe or else... We are going to still discuss. <laughs> All right. What is one of the most prominent symptoms? And these are 10 symptoms, but these are not like ascending or descending order, but they can exist in either order. And some people may have them more or less. So what is the first symptom that I have always seen? The first symptom I have seen is they can never apologize. They will die. They will... They will take poison, they will commit suicide, they will they will do anything or they will just vanish or disappear. <clears throat> but they can never apologize. Never. They will they will beg, borrow, steal <laughs> to maintain their reputation, the false persona that they uh, have created. So do you know somebody uh, who never apologizes? And yes, what is most important is when I'm speaking all these 10, it can happen that you're visualizing some person in your head. Okay, So it's very important that you write for this quality. I know that there's this one person and what kind of behavior have you seen in them? Write it down in the comments. I would like to see. And also the cherry on the top. If you know their horoscope, please do not mention their names. Just mention this person has this placement. Maybe this can cause this. Let's make a research community in the comment section for this video. So as I said, they can never apologize. I mean, they are never wrong. In in ASMEs, uh, there's a saying, now we're letting opera <laughs> Which means the water has come up to the person's neck, but the person is not jumping uh, to the boat uh, from the roof. Because the person the person is still holding to his or her opinions, okay? When they know, everybody knows, and the whole world is aware of what they are doing, but still they will never apologize. Because they can never accept that they are wrong, okay? So this is the first symptom I have seen in my opinion. <clears throat> what is the next uh, symptom? The next symptom is this is this is epic. This happens so many times because the first one only happens if they are actually wrong, but the second one can happen all the time. The second one is they have no patience to listen. They always bring up their own stories by constantly interrupting you. So suppose uh, you meet them and they ask you, "Hey, how are you? How's life?" So you tell them, "Oh, actually, you know." Life is not treating me very well. And they'll ask you, why? What happened? Actually, you know, I was coming, you know, uh, I actually, I lost my job, you know, this happened, that happened. So when you say something, then you expect that the person will show some empathy. They will say, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Maybe you can try, maybe things will be better. Don't worry, have faith in God, so and so, blah, blah, blah. But if you tell any of such things to a narcissist, what they will do is they will always bring up their own stories. They'll say, 
Oh, you lost your job? No, actually, you know, I also lost my job uh, three months back or six months back. But then this happened. I did this. I did that. Ye hua, wo hua, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And then they will glorify themselves so much by, by first showing that, you know, life had thrown something terrible on them. And then they will uplift themselves, like, you know, much more than they had actually uplifted themselves. They'll try to show that you are a loser. You are a failure. You, you are a zero in life. You are good for nothing. But they made it. And you may or may, may not make it, but they definitely made it in life. Okay. And constant interruption. You try to have a normal conversation with, with them. They'll constantly argue. Constantly, never-ending argument. They say, no, according to me, I, I don't think it works like this. No, no, actually, you are wrong. Actually, this happened. Actually, that happened. Oh, oh, my God. You can't have a normal conversation with them. They will always try to put their worldview onto you. And if you do not agree to that, then you are a criminal. You do not exist and you have no right to breathe in this world. If you do not agree to their worldview, all right? I mean, constant interruption I have seen. In fact, I have talked to people. Uh, sometimes people are so narcissistic. They will ask you a question. But they cannot accept your reply. They 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 will ask you the question, uh, and when they ask you, they will be very humble. Oh, sir, uh, can you please tell me why this is like this? What happened like this? You know, maybe this that. And then you try to understand the situation, and because they ask you, you give us uh, you give, give give a suggestion. But then what they do is no. But according to me, this is not like this. No, 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 no. This is no, no, no. You are wrong. This that. Oh my God. I mean, they. They will only listen to you provided you tell them what you what they want to hear. Otherwise, forget it. They're not listening to you. And constant interruption, as I said. You, I mean, this is classic. You know, you you speak something about yourself, and then they bring up their own stories, and then they interrupt you always. All the time. They will interrupt you. All right. <laughs> what is the third symptom? The third symptom is they're ultra judgmental, ultra, ultra, ultra judgmental, <laughs> super judgmental. They will always give you unwarranted advice, even in their areas which they have no knowledge upon. And they will not inquire about your current situation. So, for example, or maybe you you are having some problem in life, and you just share with that person. Now, of course, uh, there's nothing wrong in giving advice. I mean, uh, if if the person is, if if you are sincere and genuine, and you you know that you can help this person, there's nothing wrong in giving advice. But the problem is when you do not know what they went through or what they are going through now, or why why has this person behaved like this? You have no idea. You see some external behavior, and then you put a label on them. Oh yeah, this person is like this. That's terrible because then you actually cannot help the person because you, in that case, you are just treating the symptom. You are not treating the root cause. Okay. But they are full of this advice for any area of life. No, you ask them, oh, whoa, 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 what's going to happen to this country? You know, then, then they'll give some advice, you know, which may, maybe they have no idea on geopolitics or or how the world runs, you know, how economy functions, but they, they would have seen some video somewhere, you know, they would have done something. And then they will come up and they will have a fight with you. Okay, they will have fight for the silliest reasons, baseless, useless, nonsensical reasons for anything and everything life, okay? So this is like, why do they do this? Because they have this ultra elated sense of uh, false ego. It's like a balloon which convinces them that they know anything and everything about anyone and everyone. They think they're like Lord Narayana because Lord Narayana is the only one who knows everything. As Krishna says in the Gita, right? Ishwara Sarva Bhutanam Hridde Arjuna Tishtarti Oh my dear Arjuna, I am seated in everybody's heart. So Krishna knows everything. He knows past, present and future, right? But they believe inside that they are more powerful than God. That is why they have this insatiable desire to comment on anything and everything and on anybody and everybody. Number four, what is the fourth symptom of that you are dealing with a narcissist? They will bully you subtly <laughs> or sarcastically. 
Now, of course, sarcasm can be uh, not necessarily narcissistic always. You may be sarcastic and you, you may be funny, right? That's perfectly fine. But you will understand when somebody is doing that. So it's like in Hindi, you say, na, tana marna. it's like uh, they're pulling your leg. So pulling your leg uh, doesn't mean, you know, in a childish sense, you know, sometimes friends also do it. Then that's perfectly fine. <clears throat> but they are pulling your leg on something which they do not have now. So for example, uh, if, you, if, if you have a lot of money and somehow this person knows that you have a lot of money, now, what does it mean to have a lot of money? Does it mean millionaire or billionaire, whatever? A lot of money for a narcissist means more money than them. Simple. If you have a thousand dollars more in your bank account, then according to them, you are a criminal. You are you have you have become rich by you know looting somebody or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> so then, what they will do is they they will somehow bully you. Okay. So suppose you go somewhere with the person, and then. Uh, you know, it, it comes, uh, you, you have to share the bills, you know, then they, then they will somehow, you know, directly or indirectly tell you, oh, you are so rich, you know, why can't you pay the bill? It depends on the person, but they will somehow bully you. They, they will uh, they will try to show the person who is more richer than them that because they are more richer than them, so it is their duty to always pay for them. Okay, for everything, and they they will they have this never-ending sense of entitlement, and they will somehow try to you know uh, make you feel guilty. It's like guilt trap. <clears throat> oh, after all, you know, you are uh, you you are working in this big company. You know, of course, I mean, what's this for you, right? But uh, that's not how the world works, right? Even though you may be uh, very rich, or but uh, that doesn't mean that you 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 have the power to just print money, right? It doesn't mean that, but they will subtly do it in a way where you feel you feel that oh yeah actually you know i am in a better position than them so it's my responsibility now that is fine if that person thinks that by himself nothing wrong with it but if the other person is trying to uh, guilt trap you and shame you for having more money and then thereby demanding directly or indirectly that you take a uh, uh, a, a portion of uh, the burden of money then you are most likely dealing with the narcissist but again remember this will be very subtle they will never speak directly unless they are very shameless they, then they may speak directly also <clears throat> number five they will over glorify themselves over it's like hmm. and they will glorify something uh, themselves for something sometimes by saying things which are actually very irresponsible like uh, there was one person I knew, a very narcissistic personality. So this girl uh, was there in my uh, university in Germany. So what this girl would do, she's very smart and like uh, very, uh, very intelligent nonetheless. Mm -hmm. So all these traits that I'm telling you matches with this, matches with this person. But what she would sometimes do is so, suppose there's a presentation. And when you have a presentation at the end of the semester, does it mean that you have to make the presentation uh, a night before? Well, many people may do that. But does it show that you are very responsible or does it show you are highly responsible student, right? To make the presentation in one or two days when you know that there is no exam for that subject. You just have to give a presentation and uh, publish a paper or whatever, you know, so... But what this uh, girl would do is, uh, she would you know go to this presentation and and then after before giving the presentation, she would say, "Oh, actually, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry for the presentation. You know, I just made it two days back, right?" And then the, they will give a fantastic presentation. Okay, so but, so what they try to do is they will try to show that they are extra skilled, they are extra competent, they are extra sharp, they are extra intelligent, they are extra brilliant, you know. The work that you need three months, you bloody fools, I can do it in 40, 48 hours, okay. And everybody knows you cannot make a great presentation in 40, 48 hours. I mean, you can make a presentation, but if you have to put stuff, then you got to research, right. So the background work cannot be done in 48 hours. You can make slides, okay. <clears throat> 
Uh, but she she used to present as if you know uh, it's it's actually something very responsible but um, that shows you know she's ultra competent she can make such a beautiful presentation in 48 hours okay and of course this person would have frequent clashes with uh, other people and nobody would like this person or never nobody would like to associate themselves number 6 they will always link themselves to some famous personality in their family or circle. Which means, so suppose they they were in school uh, and then one of them, one of their classmates was an average student. But now this person became famous, you know, person became a CEO of a company or made it big in social media, became an influencer or became a big actor or somebody or became a politician or an IS officer in India and all these like famous personalities. So what they will do is they will try to gain some uh, credit because of for that person's success. <clears throat> so suppose in sixth standard when they both were 12 years old, so this narcissist had sat with this person for six months. So then they will say, oh, actually, you know, I sat with him, you know, he was a good student. I, I always knew he would make it big in life, you know. We used to share a lot of things, but how in the universe is sitting six months with a sixth standard guy, uh, how do you have any contribution in his becoming an IS officer or a big politician or a big film star or a big influencer? What role does that have, right? Now, of course, you might have a role... Even for one day, nothing wrong with it. And there may be life-changing things. But they will claim credits, you know. And, and especially, I have seen, uh, sorry to be very bored, I have seen narcissistic teachers doing this always. Oh, kon tha wo? Are, apna, apna chela hai. He's my student after all, right? Oh, oh, yes, really. What did you teach? Oh, yeah. I mean, 12 years back, I taught him chemistry, you know. I taught her whatever, physics. So, after all, he has to be great, right? He's my student. How dare he not be great? He will be, right? Because I'm great. <clears throat> or they may link themselves to some family member. They may show, oh, yeah, this person was like, my God, he was like my soulmate in the family. You know, my uncle or my brother or <clears throat> my sister became this famous personality. I mean, I was so lucky to have his association. I was so happy. He was such a nice person. But what they are doing inside is they are fueling their ego because people now will uh, see them in very uh, as somebody very special because of their connection with this special personality. <clears throat> Number seven, they will only contact people with some name, fame, power position. So this is very visible in company ladders. Okay. Company means not corporate, but in any organization. So, for example, you know, there's a company where uh, there's a junior, you know, subordinate, and then there's a manager, or then there is, you know, like senior manager, then later on vice president and CFO, CEO, and all this. <clears throat> so now, when when this narcissist employee, he he knows, you know, he has some special. Um, he has done something special, you know, apparently, apparently, apparently special, which he thinks is very special. Then what he will do is he will try to weigh the situation. Okay. He will try to see what else is other people doing. Now, if you see suddenly there's a requirement in the company. So what he will do is he will bypass his boss and send, send this information to his boss. Or, or he will do something by which he will bypass authority. Okay, this is this is very this is one of the very prominent symptoms of a narcissist. So, for example, uh, if if there is a you know if, if there is a child, okay, and then uh, he has his parents. If the child is narcissistic, then he will he will make some decision without talking to his parents. Or it can be the other way around. If the father or mother is narcissistic, you know, uh, then they will decide something, you know, without even talking to the child. Okay. So it's like bypassing uh, the person in concern. And the moment they see, so if in a family, there are, you know, like uh, five brothers and one brother is very rich and very famous. So then you will see this narcissist Maybe he's one of the other brothers. So he will always keep a good relation with this person who 
uh, is earning a lot of money and who is very famous, even though that person may be a criminal. And even though the other people, the other three brothers may be very nice, they may be very good, gentle, kind human beings, but he will thrash them. He will say, oh, you know, what are you guys doing? You know, <clears throat> he is the ultimate one. But why? Because he wants to be in that uh, rich person's good books. So he will do anything. He will bypass his father or his mother or he will bypass his elder brother or whatever. I mean, he, he, will, he will do whatever just to... Uh, you know, uh, stay in contact with that person. And suppose, you know, in the family, the father says, you know, oh, this person, my eldest son became rich, you know, but he's a criminal and none of my sons or daughters should keep any contact with him. And imagine if that is true. But if this son is one of the narcissists, I mean, if one of the sons is a narcissist, he will bypass the father and he will stay in contact till the time that person is benefiting from this brother. Once the brother falls, He's like, oh, I'm such an obedient son of the father, right? I'll, I'll follow my father. <laughs> Number eight, they will love bomb you in the beginning and they will ditch you later. Oh my God. <laughs> this is like, <laughs> now what is love bombing? Love bombing means <clears throat> they will give you excessive adoration in the beginning. It's like... <clears throat> It's like unbelievable. They will, they will put you to such high. Uh, they will put you in such high pedestal, and they will speak terms and words, you know, which when you feel, you will feel, wow, am I really that good? Am I? Is it true that I am so great? <laughs> but then what happens? The moment they have taken out. They have sucked you, as in Hindi they say, Isko hai. <laughs> So after sucking you, they will throw you, they will ditch you. So I have also met many people. You know, there was one person in New Delhi. So uh, I mean, he he had some work to get done through me. <laughs> So when I uh, interacted with him, in, with him in the beginning, so he just came and he just touched my feet and he said, Oye Bhagwan, oh my God, you speak so much about Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. According to me, you and Krishna are non-different. You are as good as Krishna. Aap aage to Bhagwan aage so now, of course, you tell me that I speak on the Gita. Fine. Thank you. You tell me, oh, you are very knowledgeable on the Gita. Well, thank you. <laughs> but to tell me that I am like Lord Krishna or to tell me that I am as good as God, I mean, to tell that to anybody, forget about me or anybody else, to tell that to anybody, I mean, that's like uh, an ultra source of... You know, we see that in the scriptures also when Brahmaji had come down to Hiranagashapu, that Hiranakashapu praised Brahma as if, you know, he's the supreme god or somebody like that. And Brahmaji was embarrassed to hear all this. <clears throat> but the moment they get the things, then they never knew you. Okay. They, they never had your contact details. They never. Okay. Number nine. This is one of the very typical symptoms which you can identify very easily. <clears throat> They will always play the victim card. Always. Nothing is good in, in their life or nothing is good in this world. Always blaming somebody. Always criticizing people. Always pulling down people. Always showing that the world is unfair to them. The government is unfair. Economy is unfair. Religion is unfair. <coughs> Social system is unfair. This is unfair. That is unfair. Sab barbada, sab bekara, sab tabahi. This is what they will do. They will try to show that they are the object of everybody's... Uh, it's like, you know, everybody is trying to suck, suck this person. Everybody is trying to kill this person, right? So, if do, do you know somebody? I mean, very frequently, right? Like you meet them, they will say, oh, India is going to be finished. You know, Hindustan, India is barbad to be finished. America is going to be finished. Ukraine is going to be finished. Russia is going to be finished. Everything is going to end. You know, India is going to go to the ruins. You know, US is already in ruins. You know, Ukraine has been uh, demolished by Russia. Then, you know, 
what will happen to Russia after Putin, what not, you know, economy is bad, you know, inflation is bad, this is bad, that is bad. Oh my God, everything is bad, except themselves. <laughs> and the last, and one of the subtler symptoms, I would say, <clears throat> They will demand respect rather than commanding respect. Commanding respect means you behave by your example in such a way that people respect you out of love and admiration, not because of your post position. But commanding respect means to command respect. Oh, I am your whatever. I am your boss. I am your father or <clears throat> I am your mother. I am your husband. I am your wife or whoever, you know. I'm your elder brother, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm your friend. How dare you say this to me? How dare you do this, right? So they will always <clears throat> show that they are in some authority, which they may or may not be, but they will find some authority. I mean, imagine they are three months elder to you and they'll say, oh, I'm elder to you. How dare you speak to me like that? So according to them, because they are three months elder to you, so they... They have the right to do anything and everything to you. So suppose they joined the company, you know, three days before you or maybe 15 days or one month before you, then they will keep saying that for the rest of their life. Oh, I am your senior. You know, you shouldn't speak to me like that. You shouldn't talk to me like that. You know, so it's like demanding something because of some superficial seniority, you know, like age or time a person has spent in an organization. Even if it is very, very narrow. So even if a person is, you know, you stayed in a company for five years and this person stayed for six years. I mean, how does it make a big difference? Right? Not much. But this person will say, oh, you are, I mean, they, they, they may not say it directly, but they will try to exert their authority. And then they'll try to prove it to you that you should be submissive to them. So that means they are just demanding respect and their actions may or may not command respect. So you may not want to respect them. They may not be respectable, but they might, or they will want to be respected. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And uh, please write down in the comments who have you met or seen exemplifying these qualities. And if you know their horoscope, then also please mention. All right. If you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will be there and he will help you to get out of these narcissistic people. Thank you very much.